About 30 years ago, coal companies started switching over to a new method of underground mining. It's called long wall mining, and the Center for Public Integrity spent a year looking into its impact on the coal fields of southwestern Pennsylvania. We found that long wall mining rearranges the Earth's surface so dramatically that landowners can only watch as their houses fall apart and the water and wildlife disappear from their land. This area here was where the cracks were so bad that plaster literally started falling onto the floor. For 14 uh, years, Rebecca Foley has lived on a hilltop about an hour south of Pittsburgh. Five years after she moved in, the cracks in her walls showed up and the house began crumbling down around her. It was a Saturday and I went out one day and come home and this is what I found in my living room was a huge crack that went straight up between the two walls. The technical term for the damage to Rebecca's house is subsidence damage. When a long wall mining machine strips out a layer of coal from under the ground, it leaves a void that the earth falls into or subsides. That process can shake up structures on the surface as well. The nails that are into the wood in there, um, as the tension is greater and greater and greater, they'll ping like this and it'll just be this huge loud cracking sound and it wakes you from your sleep. It takes more than an hour to walk around the house and survey the damage. In every room, cracks run along the walls and ceilings and through the window panes. The entire master bathroom is falling away from the bedroom beside it, leaving a gap so large that birds were flying through it and building nests in the bathroom. The tour ends in the basement. You can actually see the shifting when you see earthquakes on TV, they show you the aftermath, and it looks like this. Long wall technology came into common use in the United States during the 1980s. Unlike traditional room and pillar techniques, this type of mining extracts every bit of coal from a seam, leading to higher productivity and larger profits for the coal companies. By 1993, 40% of all underground mining depended on long wall machines. All underground mines pose some risk of subsidence, but with long wall techniques, companies know it will happen and can plan ahead to repair the damage. While houses can be restored, long wall mining also harms the environment, and that damage is harder to reverse. In the spring of 2004, John McGinnis walked around his property with a video camera, recording the rush of water. Before being undermined, McGinnis had a well, springs, and a pond on his 100-acre farm that's tucked into a hollow near Washington, Pennsylvania. The flow of water out of that pond prior to mining was a tremendous flow. It flowed year round. After long wall mining machines passed beneath his property, McGinnis says the pond stagnated. His well dried up, and a new one doesn't provide nearly the same amount of water. In the video, the ground squelches under his boots. It's saturated with water. As he watches, he shakes his head. Subsidence also damaged his house, which is now on a tilt, but it's the water issues that really get to him. That's a very, very key issue. You, know, you lose your water. Now, they know that's going to happen, so prior to it happening, they make arrangements with a local water service company to bring you temporary water. All around southwestern Pennsylvania, giant tanks, known as water buffaloes, testify to the community's water loss. They hold 2,500 gallons of water and are meant to replace wells gone dry. The coal companies maintain that some water sources replenish after the land settles, but at least one company, Console Energy, has helped pay for miles of piping to deliver what some people around here call city water. Kim Jones, another landowner who lost her water, has been working with Console to replenish her now dry stream. Basically what they did, they hooked the, the stream into public water. There's black piping that comes up through and they have every so often they have a piece that comes off of that line that goes directly into the stream. The piping which runs along the entire length of the stream connects to a public water line. The company has also drilled holes in the stream bed and filled them with grout. The idea is to keep the water from seeping through the cracks created by the mining. So far, it hasn't worked. Kim Jones. Don't see much sense in it. Don't understand how pumping public water into a stream is a solution. There used to be a thriving ecosystem here. The Joneses have a pale copy of a healthy stream they remember. It may seem strange, but that's the solution mandated by the state's Department of Environmental Protection, or DEP. 
It's the DEP's responsibility to oversee mining in Pennsylvania. Despite the department's name, critics say it is more concerned with rubber stamping the coal industry's actions than with protecting natural resources. When John McGinnis contested the coal company's response to his water issues, he expected that the DEP would be on his side. He was wrong, he says. You are surprised when you get the orders from the court and it says the title of the case is John and Cynthia McGinnis versus the Department of Environmental Protection and Consol Energy 84 Mining Company permittee. So you go through this long process, always thinking in your mind that the Department of Environmental Protection is on your side. And whenever you get to the point of appeal, they're an adversary. They're on the other side of the table, sitting with the mine. The DEP says it approves long-wall mining only when there's no presumptive evidence that a stream will be damaged. But as Joshua Silvis, a water expert for Consul, told the center, you don't really know what's going to happen until you mine. Duke Lake is a dramatic example of that uncertainty. Once the centerpiece of Ryerson Station State Park in Greene County, the man-made lake is now dry and overgrown with cattails. In 2005, after the long-wall machines passed by, the lake's dam started to leak badly. Park officials drained the lake rather than risk flooding houses and businesses downstream. On a Saturday morning in September, the park is deserted. Families used to come here to picnic, swim, and boat. But without the lake, there's little reason for them to come at all. The way things are now, coal companies like Consul have latitude to mine almost anywhere, as long as they put the buildings and the streams on the surface back as they were. But walking through Rebecca Foley's house or standing on the shores of a ghostly lake, putting things back as they were, doesn't seem so easy.